What's up guys? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be giving you a full gameplay of Scion. It's been quite a minute since I've done it and I think a lot has changed since the last time so it should be a good learning experience for everybody. First of all let me just say that you probably saw me tossing up between going 80 Scion and tank this game in the lobby. Generally speaking I would go for Ooh, this is going to be messy. And I'm going to pull you out of there because I got distracted. So I think it's super important that you guys fully understand when to pick AD Scion and when to pick Tank Scion. And the only real way to teach you that is to go inside of my brain and actually go through my thought process. So we're going to go back into the lobby and I'm going to go through that now. Okay, as you can see, the enemy has picked a Fiora and Nautilus, which isn't a big deal. Fiora has been first picked and I get to counter pick. So I'm going to go with Scion. You would think that Scion gets countered by Fiora, but it's actually a skill matchup. Ideally, I would go Phase Rush and AD because this is lower elo. So it's like Diamond 1-ish. And that means that I could definitely bully this Fiora. Whereas if it was like a Challenger Fiora, I'd probably opt for Tank because it's too risky. Not to say I couldn't do it. It's just to say the team probably is better off with me being a Tank. Anyway, so I've set up the runes and I'm ready to do this AD Scion. Except I notice that they pick Twisted Fate. They pick Draven. And at this point, I know that AD Scion just isn't going to be great. They end up picking Kane as well, which, I mean, even makes it worse. The reason it's bad is because, okay, they got Nautilus to block your initial ultimate damage. And then it's so easy for them to just gold card you. And then you won't even get any damage out. You're running around your passive. It's going to get gold carded. And they even got Draven to disrupt you. I mean, it's a very difficult game to be playing AD Scion into. I don't even know who you'd be trying to focus. This is clearly a tank game in my mind. And I hope you can see it as well. And let's get back into the game. Ooh, this is going to be messy. This has no flash. Oh, no, he does have flash. So I'm going to keep pushing forward here. This is worth. If jungler dies. Questionable TP. But I think it'll be worth it because I can cheese and take his red. I'm happy to lose a little bit of farm here. If I get to deny him this red cam. Actually, I'm gonna skip the red cam. I'm just going straight for the gank. You reckon he saw me? Oh, hello. He can't get level 2 now. This is fine. Let's just stall. Wastes all the time again. So he doesn't have smite. He cannot get level 2. I have boots. I should be able to outwalk him. He's got no flash. I'm literally just going to keep going around in circles. And now they don't have a jungler anymore. <laughs> We should be fine to just wait here. I know Fiora's coming. You can see she's not in the top lane. So I'm just going to wait. If he needs me, I'll help. Okay, he doesn't need me. I'm going to head back, reset, and then try to get to lane. Scoop up as much of this farm as possible. But the truth is, I literally don't need to do anything anymore. So yeah, I'm sacking my top lane there. But I can just sit in lane, farm as best as I can. I'm, I'm not going to die to Fiora. I'm no threat anymore. Like, I'm under no pressure. And they don't have a jungler anymore. So, we're going to have a Kindred run around destroying the map while we just sit and chill. We'll get 6 and then we'll go back to bot lane and try and pack that lane. Unfortunately, I can't help him at this very moment. I need to get this experience. But I'll try to cut him off here. That's just um, the way it went, unfortunately. That is one of the downsides to having a big wave stacking top. And I just can't roam to help him there because I gave up so much. But he should still have an edge on... So 
So Fiora got a kill, she got a double buff, but it's not too concerning, mainly because I don't intend on trying to kill her anyway. So that buff will time out. Unless I get ganked at this very second, which would be quite unfortunate, but I don't think that's going to happen. We can actually go under this tower if he wants to. I'm happy to die here, actually, for this. Okay, didn't even die. So, the reason I'm happy to die is, if, he, if I die, my jungle is getting a double buff back and a kill. Plus, look at this wave that he would have missed. Well, I guess he's got teleport, but... Good thing we didn't die. But yeah, so dying, very optimal. Not dying, even better. Honestly though, he's kind of surprised he still has his teleport. Anyway, things things are going just as we had planned. Look at the farm. Even with all that trolling about, we're still pretty much even. I do believe he has slightly a level lead, so we're going to try and make that up by taking this Gromp. Kindred's in the bot lane. There's no reason for me to not take this Gromp. If I go to top lane, I'm just going to be waiting for Fiora to push that wave in anyway, right? Because he's got lane pressure. I don't. And that just means in the meantime, let's take this Gromp. There's no point in not. It's going to heal us up. It's going to give our mana back, and it's going to give us a free golden experience that we wouldn't otherwise have. Boom. It's almost like we just walked into lane to collect this wave. Except we got some extra moolah. So he's level 5. I believe we have a level advantage now as well. My current goal, I don't want this pushing. See how they're kind of dead already? It means it's going to push my way. We want to keep it in front of our tower because he can kill us if we get too far out. Or at least force us to waste our ultimate, which we don't want to do because we want to time our ultimate with our teleport, which is coming up in 56 seconds because we used it immediately at level 1. So once we time that, it means we can gank bot for free and impact that lane as well. That way we impacted the jungle's lane, we impacted the bot lane, and if we win top, that means we're affecting three lanes. Whereas if we set top, best case scenario, you're probably just winning one, and that sometimes just isn't enough to carry games, especially in lower yellow. This game, we're in like the Diamond 1 bracket. We got demoted, but... Not, I mean, we didn't get demoted. We got deranked. Okay, you see how this is starting to build a wave? Now it's time to shove this in, because look at our teleport coming up. Look at level 6. Perfect time to head back while he deals with this wave. If he wants to freeze it, good on him. Doesn't bother me, because I'm going to be bot killing his, his bot laners, right? And getting gold. And then he'll be forced to push it. Gonna grab boots. Look at this timing as well. They've got three people bot. No matter what, we can tower dive. Because we're gonna have four people. I'm going for it. I don't want to wait. Next one as well. I can tank this easy. Oh shit, I don't need to die here. I don't think I hit him there. Oh no, I did tag him. Sweet. Let's head back and then I'll teleport top from my wave. We should also get the infernal. And I'm gonna need to clear this wave and then quickly go check that rift. Okay, he's not on the rift. We're in the clear. So he got one tower plating off of that, and what did we get? Four kills on our team. You see the impact you could be having on Scion if you start playing the macro game, rather than just sitting in the lane. You could be doing so much more. So now my next objective is to push this. I want to be putting him in the same spot every time, where I push him, and he has to deal with that wave, and then I get to go do something else in the map. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the scuttle into that pit there. So that I can queue both of them. And now we're going to start taking this rift. So recently, they made changes to the rift that basically you get local gold now for killing the fucking thing. So you get 200 local gold just for killing this damn thing. Plus the tower platings that it gives. 
I mean, there's so much value in this rip. Any top laner knows I'm taking this because I'm greedy. I've given uh, Kindred so much. Let's be real. I wouldn't mind if Kindred came top, mainly because we could just take this whole tower from him. It's worth, like, what, 1.2k, 1k-ish? Clearly, there's some wards here. Happy to share the gold with Kindred. Very profitable for us. We get the entire tower. I've got all. I might actually just all. I could get the cane here. Okay. Well, no harm done. There was a chance that cane would still be in hit range. Okay, full tower. Sweet. The other plan, obviously, would have been to keep my ult and go bot with it again, and then rotate into Infernal, which probably is better now that we think about it. It's just that Silas came top, so we had numbers. There was no way it could go wrong. But yeah, if I could take, if I could do whatever, I wouldn't have ulted there. Too risky. Whereas the bot ults guarantee, or like a dragon fights guarantee, right? There is something I want to teach you in this one spot, something I changed in my gameplay over time. So, like I was saying, hey, we could go bot with our ult, right? It's actually super important that we keep in mind that we're up against a hyperscaling top laner. Someone who wants to perma split push. You don't want to be in a position where Fiora gets too fed and you can't deal with her. So, it is within reason to not go to the bot lane and Infernal here just to protect these platings. It, you need to put it in your mind that these platings are worth so much, they're 160 gold each. Two of them is more than a kill. So just keeping him from getting them is so crucial. Yeah, we got his, but now we need to deny him ours. It's just as important as taking his tower platings, is what I'm trying to tell you. So I really need to sit in my lane until at least 14 minutes. Then I no longer care about the top tower, and I'm willing to, to let him take it. But as you can see, we have land pressure. We push into land again. Now let's head to the to the dragon, just in case they need our backup. But let's be a little greedy. We see the cane by the wraiths. They're not going to contest that infernal. No need. So I think the next objective for us is ganking mid, because it's looking like we can pincer this guy. Okay, we tried. Likely there's a ward here, which is correct. Okay, let's go back to the plan of denying these tower platings, and then I'll probably head mid with my ultimate. Okay, we can see positioning on everybody. I'm gonna head mid, the tower plating. I think I could potentially get a tower plating if we're quick. And that was the correct call. We can maybe get two tower platings. And I don't think he's gonna have time to reach my tower. So let's hope it all works out. One tower plating. Shut down. And two tower platings. And as predicted, Fiora doesn't have the pushing power to make it to ours. So he no longer gets platings. And bam, we get the mid tower too. Talk about profits. Bam. We're rich. And like I was saying, after 14 minutes, I, I literally don't care if he takes this tower. It's completely fine. It's no longer worth as much as it once was. So next up, we could either go Tiamat or we could just play for the team fight. I'm thinking I'm gonna go for the team fight. Break it in. We can always get the team at third. No. 
So I know a lot of you guys always go hull break a second or tear mat almost every time because you think you need damage. But I guarantee you, a lot of the times you don't need damage. What you need is to be super tanky to help your team. And an interesting fact is that the Aegis is a power spike for Scion. Like, even just this component is actually a power spike. You'll realize you are so much tankier once you get this. It'll surprise you, I promise. So I'm trying to walk next to him to start stacking my Sunfire. Slow him. Bad Q. Give it to Kindred. I'm okay. I'm, like, wealthy enough. But yeah, like I was saying, um, it's a big power spike for Sign that people don't realize. And then, obviously, the next power spike is stone plating. A big objective of Scion is to farm as good as you can because you get bonus health on your W4 per minion and you're using this bonus health with your Sunfire now, really. And you're utilizing this bonus health with your shield and your Sunfire cape because you'll deal more damage with the Sunfire cape but also it works with your stone plate and that's why it's such a good combo. So the more bonus health we have, the more this was a better ward to teleport to. I was a little bit distracted. He must see me. I'm gonna try to save him. Okay, at least we didn't get punished for our bad teleport. I'm sure... Oh wait, I was gonna let them do it, because I'm sure they have it, but it has local gold now. This one's worth... The second rift is worth 300 local gold, so I should get 100 gold from this. Huh, did they nerf it? Maybe it's only worth 200 now. I could have sworn originally it was 200 for the first one and then 300 for the second. The more you know. Okay, so we are 300 gold away from getting our stone plating, and once we get that, we really want a team fight because that's just the, the ultimate team fighting item for Scion. And I feel like you will start to win more ELO if you lay off the split pushing and start utilizing Scion in the team fight. We're just shy. Is there any way we can get this gold? Anyway, we just have to go to the dragon without it. I don't think they need us, but it's always good to be there just in case, or at least within ult range. So I'm probably just going to path mid and then get a camp and then head back. Instead of going for the rates, I'm going to go for his blue side, because I know he's going to jump this wall after to get his red, and then he's going to want to clear that out. Whereas I can take these, and it won't impact his, his pathing. Okay, so he's going back. No, he's going for that red. No, he's going back. <laughs> Whatever. Take this, push, go by, and then we'll look to do our final team fight before we get some ELO. And I think next item I'll go for instead of the Titanic is I'm just going to get some anti-healing. Stone plating, and we also don't have enough for the damn bramble either. I'm wondering if I could just sit here wait for them to get a tower. It's likely they'll get this tower. Yeah, okay, cool. We'll just wait. There we go, he teleports up in 40 seconds. If they're all gonna go bot, I'm happy to park mid and collect this 300 gold from the, the tower. This is over. I'd be surprised if they don't surrender. Whoops, now they might not. They don't need me, I'm just gonna push this tower. But at 300 gold! No! It's trying to steal my gold! Smart. Not taking it because you're a support. I like that. I'm not going to try and make a play here. Like, once you secure two inhibitors, you've already won. There's no point in doing anything fancy. At least this early in the game. gonna clear out as much of their gold as possible so if I take these it means they can't get it which means they can't make any money and we make more money that's just the way to go about it oh get fucked Okay, now I'm going to go for Tiamat, but do I want the Tiamat component? Probably not. In this situation, it's very rare that you wouldn't go Tiamat first, but I think the next team fight is going to be a big one, 
and I don't feel like the Tiamat is going to do more than the additional health, because this will make our Sunfire deal more damage, it'll make our Gargo be tankier. Okay, they, they surrendered. It's over. GG. And that's how easy it is to carry with Tank Scion. I'm going to give Kindred my honor because he took the lead, he ran with it, and he did exactly what he was meant to do. No dramas. And we're back in Diamond 1 on this account. <laughs> Only 4,000 damage to champions. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I am certain you learned a few things, so feel free to drop the like, subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.